Welcome to the Rock Life Podcast, where we talk about relationships, adventure, freedom, and just some all-around real and raw conversations. I'm Mike LaRock. I got my lovely wife, Laura. Hey, guys. How's it going? What are we talking about, babe? Today, we are going to talk about communication. Huh? <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> the importance of communication in your relationship. And also, I guess on the turn, the flip side of that, um, the importance of listening and feeling heard and safe. I mean, it's all super connected, right? So, Absolutely. Um, basically, where this came from is in my research of my my business and my content creation and my course creation, I surveyed a group of, there was about 20 women, and I asked them the question, what do you do when you are frustrated about something in your relationship? And these were some of the answers. Ruminate, isolate, get mad, bicker, try to talk, but he gets defensive, ignore the issue until eventually a big argument ensues. Just hide it. It's easier. We both avoid conflict a lot. I shut down. I get passive aggressive. I lock myself away in my room for a while. I vent to friends. I get angry and hold it in. I stew in, until I snap. And or we talk, but I we never come to a solution. So I thought that that was quite the list. <laughs> really interesting. Yeah. And that wasn't obviously all of them, but that was just kind of like the gist of what I had gathered. Yeah. And then so I asked the question, um, what do you desire most in like your ideal relationship? And these were the top answers. Open communication, in-depth conversations, meaningful conversations, healthy communication, good communication, <laughs> date nights and intimacy, happiness and simplicity, and more romance and play. Mm. So I thought that that was super interesting that most of these women were desiring <laughs> really great conversation, right. which would lead to more date nights and intimacy and happiness and romance and play. Right. But yet when they need to communicate, they either shut down, get mad, don't come to a solution, don't know how to express themselves, don't know how to ask for what they want or need or desire. Right. And so I was like, huh, super interesting. And I know our podcast here, this episode will be listened to by male and female. Mm -hmm. And so know that kind of and stuff. anything else. You know. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry if I left anyone out. <laughs> um, know that where I've created this document. So basically from that, I created a, a little freebie for my audience to help a woman feel seen and heard in her relationship through authentic communication. And so there's a good little booklet here of descriptions and then an actual process at the end of steps to take to bring your concern or your want or your need or your desire to your masculine, more masculine um, partner. Perfect. And so we're going to talk about this tonight and we're going to share both sides of this. Yeah. Um, and then ladies, feel free to go to my website after and download this. And as I said to Mike earlier too, men, you're welcome to go download this as well. I mean that you would just sort of work in the opposite. Of yeah. Well, no, you'd stuff. be silly not to because it's basically a cheat code. But to, yeah, then you'll also help out. learn how to understand yeah. her better. Absolutely. So, just know that if you go to download it, you are going to be on my email list and you may receive some more like feminine type emails, but you can always unsubscribe if you need to That's fair. or stay on, whatever. Yeah. But okay, so where I went with this was why are we all such shitty communicators? You're always told to shut up. <laughs> Sit down and shut up. No. Well, partly, maybe, <laughs> maybe part of that is, but I know for myself anyway, I like, I never, I never seen it with my parents, but that's not saying it didn't happen. I just never seen it. What's that? Seen what? Any kind of like normal, like loving communication like that or like open, open talks. Right. And maybe it happened behind closed doors. Which is fair. I, I, I have no idea and I never really talked to my mom about that, but yeah, I've never seen mm -hmm. it, I guess I'd say, but Again, doesn't mean it wasn't happening. And yeah, I guess I'd be my only teacher. I had no other teachers for it. 
Yeah. And that point is very interesting because we we do learn from our earliest caregivers. Right. And mm -hmm. so it's not to say if you didn't see your parents doing it, that your parents weren't communicating, but they kept it behind closed doors, which was kind of like a generational thing. And so we didn't see it good, bad or otherwise. Right. right? So what did we take from it? So that's a really interesting point, I think. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's what I sort of gathered it at is like, okay, so if no one taught us, then where did we learn it unless we consciously went out and sought how to communicate more effectively with our partner? Well, totally. And then right? who, it's not really like, it's not high on my, or it wouldn't be like the first thing on my list to be like, okay, I'm going to do this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it'd make your life a lot easier if you did. Yeah, because you're just navigating through life and your relationships and um, doing the best that you can, right? We mm -hmm. all are until we need to seek something, right? And usually it happens after we've hit rock bottom yeah, in our relationship totally. and maybe things are unfixable now at this point. But my hope and, and our desire is that you're not at that point and you can start where you're at and start to now deepen and strengthen your relationship, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I, I ask you to just really think about your earliest caregivers and reflect back on how they communicated. Like, did they, did you witness people in your life openly sharing like how they're feeling and what they want and what they need from you? This and almost sounds funny <laughs> talking about it because like, no, you're not seeing that. But. Right. And if you did, if they did do that, Fucking did awesome, the partner yeah. who was reciprocating that, did they openly and lovingly receive that, right? Did they not get triggered themselves or not take it personally, not start an argument or storm off and leave the room and actually like listen with loving ears to that to that person? No, <laughs> and again, fair. it does sound funny because chances are probably slim. Yeah, but it's funny. I'm just thinking as you say that, like how you see it through your eyes, Oe, like mm -hmm. when you're in that situation or you're the, you're the kid or the teenager in that, you don't myself anyway like it was always you're selfishly like worried about your own feelings or worrying about yeah. how you perceive it not I guess why would you be thinking about that but yeah and you're probably not thinking about your parents and no how they're why would you right? at all but subconsciously you're soaking in yeah. you are taking in what you've witnessed and then that's how you go and play out in your life unless again you bring the subconscious stuff conscious and then make a new choice around it right mm -hmm. And so this is by no means to place blame on our parents or our caregivers or people in our no. life. You say it all the time, right? They did the best they could with what they had. And they did. Just like everyone's doing the best they can with what yeah. they have. Yeah. I mean, we're all fucking up all the time, right? But oh, yeah. we're just trying to do better. But yeah, it's place no blame on them, but simply to just bring awareness that, okay, so that's who I probably learned from is the result what I want. And then now I have this conscious choice to start making changes in every moment. Oh, totally. Right? And most of us have, there's little ones watching us now, right? So yeah, exactly. So true. So basically, I guess why, like, why is communication in, in relationships so important? Well, what else? What else is there? That's gotta be number one, right? Mm -hmm. By far. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck do you have if you don't have that? I mean, well, yeah, you're surviving, because... you're living, but you still got to communicate in that. Yeah, because I think communication is so key with connection, mm -hmm. right? Like I actually had a really amazing call with one of my clients last night and we were talking about communication and that seems to have been or seems to to be the biggest shift that her and her husband have experienced is a deeper and more open communication with each other. But we were talking about the link between like communicating just like this, right? Like about everyday needs and desires or feelings that are coming up. And then also in the bedroom, because once you have that level of communication and you're able to safely express yourself to your partner yeah. and feel heard and feel um, seen and not worry that they're going to get triggered or take it personally or make it about them and then cause it into a big thing, that shifts into the bedroom. As right. well, right? And then it leads to also like a deeper connection there where you can have deeper intimacy and, and sex and really truly ask for what you want. Yeah, then everything just feels better, <laughs> more fun, everything, right? Yeah. And then I said to her, and then I believe that when you are so open in the bedroom, like you are vulnerable and surrendering, right? Good and time. 
asking and, and seeking and, and giving your whole self that when you have that level of communication in your bedroom, you have it in all the other areas of your life. No, and everything else is just easy. Yeah. Or easier. Exactly. Like that that connection level is so deep that you can communicate about anything. Yeah. That's been my experience anyways and my experience with my clients who we talk about that stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like communication, I mean, it starts at, there's all different levels, right? And we were talking about this earlier, like if you are at a point where you're all those things I said at the beginning, <laughs> yeah. um, just like not really expressing or feeling safe to and, and, you know, isolating yourself or it's starting an argument, you're going to be starting at this plane, like a higher up level where it's like, I need to start practicing implementing new tools or even just simply becoming conscious and aware of how I'm communicating. That's a big step. Yeah. Right. Because we can't change our partner. No. So just even the consciousness and the awareness of how you communicate is like this first level. And then the second level is how you then express it to your partner. And uh, we're going to give you tips on that. But then as you start practicing more of like the superficial things, like maybe asking for help with the dishes or to get the kids ready for bed or washing your car, like those, I don't know, things like that, yep. then you can take it a, a step deeper, right? It goes a level deeper. Right. And then you can start sharing more of maybe some feelings that are coming up for you or like some deeper things you've been holding in for a long time. Because the thing is too, when we don't communicate what's on our hearts with our partner, we start to resent Right. And, and we hold on to that energy and it builds in our body. It, it creates this divide between us, like literally a wall between us. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So you have to think about doing this slowly where you're just kind of peeling back the layers or just like changing the steps really slowly to build that deeper connection with your partner. No, I, I agree. Absolutely agree with all that because it it is right. And that's what you had to do with me. Like it, it took it was kind of baby steps to get into those. Um, especially with my communication level of if we we're going to fight or anything, just not talk about it really just yeah. shut down. Right. Yeah. And that's the interesting thing. Like there's fight, flight, freeze or fawn. So you got the people who just want to get argumentative and just fight about things because mm -hmm. you've triggered something within them, even though it might have nothing to do with them. Um, they might just freeze. Right. And, and shut down. They might, fly, uh, fly, like need to leave the situation and, and move to a different room or they're the ones who leave the house for a while. Right. Right. Or you have the fawn who is the one who just wants to make it right. Right. Like even if they didn't do anything wrong, they want to make they it still right. got to make it right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of my clients fall under that and that's what I, I fell under as well. Right. But, um, sorry, what were you say saying? No, that's, that's about it really. Like, I mean, as far as communicating, I just didn't want to fight because I, yeah, just didn't want to waste energy in it. And I didn't want to, yeah, I just really didn't want to fight. I figured that, you know, fighting in a relationship is like, well, what the fuck kind of relationship is this? What kind of marriage is this? But, um, obviously know now that just shutting down and not really talking about it's not going to solve anything either. Right. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it, it, it goes both ways too. Like I could see that even trying to be a fawn. If you are a font, like even getting frustrated with that, like, but again, you, I didn't know how to communicate any of that. Like, mm -hmm. stop trying to make it right. Let's just, but again, you, no, if you don't you talk about it, say, yeah. Just be, can't you just be? And I'd be like, no, like, let's make this good and just go back to being good. I don't want to like fight. Right. But simply, so, okay. So, <laughs> in me, oh, this like, is what we're doing now. We're going to fight. So this yeah. is where we're going. Um, Going back, like putting myself into that past Laura, I always felt like I wanted to share with you my feelings. Right. But then I think you took it personally, maybe, or like took it as I was blaming you for it or and maybe I was. Right? Oh, probably. Because, I mean, you uh, we didn't have you didn't have these skills either. Right. Mm -hmm. So it was it was probably coming off the wrong way and I was mm -hmm. accepting it the wrong way and then just. Yeah. yeah, we'd get nowhere. Exactly. But um, so, crap, there was something that I wanted to say around that because you were talking about, oh, so you obviously had a subconscious belief that communicating meant 
argument, arguing or um, or fighting right or some sort of chaos because I, I believe otherwise you wouldn't shut down, right? Like if, if communication was a healthy aspect of living, you would be like just like eating food and going to the bathroom and drinking water. You'd be like, oh, yeah, but this is just what we do. Right. Right. And it goes both ways, like for me too. But I'm just seeing this now that you say that. Yeah. No, it's it's a little tricky. And I mean, like I say, I just had z- well, I have zero skills in that. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to maybe be like look like an asshole or look like a fool or anything. So then just wouldn't, wouldn't get involved with it really. Just, right. Just stomp it out before it even became a thing. And could you say too that maybe like you weren't even in touch with what you were feeling? Like you were so far removed from your emotions at, at that time that oh, 100%. you didn't I mean, know what? I didn't know what I was even feeling myself because I was so numbed out half the time, right? Like yeah. If I was feeling really overwhelmed or anything like that, I would just fucking go get drunk. Yeah. And forget about everything, right? Yeah. So yeah, literally <laughs> forget about it. Um, <laughs> literally blackout. Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, that, that would be, that was the coping mechanism that yeah. I had. And they're just, there's a vicious cycle, but there was honestly no other way or I didn't feel there was any other way of getting out of that. And, yeah. Um, I mean, that's a whole subject for another topic, but I mean, it just like getting drunk just seemed to be the way out of that. I didn't yeah. have to deal with any of those feelings. Oh yeah. We should do an episode on that. Well, fuck, you do a whole mini series <laughs> on that one. We could talk a year on that. Yeah. Um, okay. That totally makes sense. And I'm just thinking about where I came from. And I totally, I expressed this to you the other day that I always used to feel, and I mean, my parents divorced when I was three, so I don't actually remember a lot of what I witnessed. Mm -hmm. Um, but obviously if it ended in divorce, it probably wasn't super positive. I'm sure it wasn't great. Yeah. (laughs) If I had to just go out on a limb there and guess, but, um, in our relationship, the reason I wanted to make everything right, right away is because I always felt that, and we talked about this on our episode last week, that if we weren't living like perfect fairy tale life, that then that meant we were done. We yeah, were, we're divorced, failing, yeah. right? Yeah. So if we started a conversation and I was like, I'm just going to share with you how I feel, but then you shut down and then maybe got like a little angry, then right away I was like, no, we're leaning too far to like the chaos side. I need to tip it right back to the fantasy side, right? right? Okay. Whereas what I said last week, it's totally safe to, or it's totally doable <laughs> to live in a safe zone right in the middle of those two where it is okay to be in conflict and to settle your disagreements and not even agree. That's safe. That's okay. Right. That's like obviously other issues that I had that I've worked through. Oh, absolutely. Both of us. Right. Cause I mean, yeah. it's, I'm a hundred percent okay with talking like that at any time now. Yeah. Um, it's still not easy and it doesn't always feel the best. And sometimes, you know, like it's, it, they're hard lessons you have to learn and yeah, um some things i say i don't say it to be an asshole like i don't be malicious it just that's how i feel right yeah. and if you can get that then i mean fuck it just changes everything in a relationship makes yeah. everything so much easier yeah and i think i would say ladies be careful what you ask for because honestly now sometimes i am like i don't want to talk about things right now <laughs> oh it'd be so much easier not to right no, but even like how you said, now you'll talk about anything and you do talk about anything and you'll just talk about it as it comes up. But, and I always used to be the person who was like, like wanting trying to force to, that right? in. Yeah. And like, yeah, I want you to talk. And now, so, like, not all the time, but sometimes I'm just like, oh, I don't want to talk <laughs> because now you're so open to it, just right? Shut up. <laughs> yeah. Be mad. Leave me <laughs> yeah. alone. Go, go flee. Yeah. <laughs> No, none of that. We're going to face it head on, which I mean, that's a great life skill to have. And I don't know if it was as I'm getting older, maybe, or um, just maturing or any of that kind of thing, but it just helps everything career wise, um, even relationships just with my friends. It helps a lot. Just hit everything head on, mm-hmm. which isn't the greatest or not the greatest, but it's not the easiest thing either with a lot of my friends aren't used to that. Right. So if you uh, if you call people out on their shit, it's just you just got to be direct and no it comes from a place of love too it's not not malicious by any means and most people will accept that but if they don't then it's just kind of okay well i'm i'm here now and obviously every time like you move up different different steps and different levels and you're just we're just on different planes now and i don't think we can we just don't communicate the same right mm-hmm. which isn't a bad thing i mean they still still connect with a lot of people but it's just on different levels yeah 
and you don't call people out on their shit unless they're asking you for oh yeah no it's not just going around being like (laughs) yeah being a dick better than you this is no fuck no totally when people are asking you for advice or being dicks to you right yeah absolutely up for yourself and i can see it from a mile away now and i know where most of those things come from so i mean it's it's kind of fun in a sense Mm -hmm. um with kind of work conflicts or anything like that you can sniff it out a mile away and you can Mm -hmm. you can squash it instead of ruminating and being mad about something that um is so minor yeah and you make a story up in your own head and whatever else you do but um no it's so much easier living on that level and living in the realness because then you don't fuck around with any kind of fantasies no stories no nothing it's just like okay this is what it is Mm -hmm. and let's just get it done with yeah this is like real life Mm -hmm. yeah okay so let's bring it back to this so that we don't carry this on for a super long time because I want to make sure we give the points at the end too. Yeah. Um, but so I think we talked about how like a relationship can be a very lonely place. Yeah. And there's the different levels of connection and communication, but practicing. So just taking the first step and practicing, right. And implementing it. That's, that's the first step to change. But um, basically we want to talk a little bit about um the difference between men and women and when it comes to communicating. So what I've learned over the last few years is that most men, and we'll refer to the to men as masculine and women as feminine, which doesn't necessarily mean that that's how you always are, but just for ease of this topic, we're going to, we're going to keep it that way. So if I refer to men being more masculine and women being more core feminine, um, I want to give you like a few characteristics of that. So, The masculine tends to be more logical, more goal and results orientated, focused and linear. So in terms of communication, he basically wants you to get to the point, (laughs) fix it and then move on in the least amount of time possible. Right. And would you would you like agree with that? Oh, 100 percent. That's how I live my life. Right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is maybe your upbringing and things like that. But I mean, grew up on a farm and work-wise i'm very like a trades person and um and then even moving to the office it's all everything's just results it's all that matters right yeah. results and fixing problems and we take a lot of pride in being a problem fixer which yeah again i say it all the time like mainly problems that i've caused yeah i have to go back and fix them but <laughs> um that's exactly like that's to a t yeah myself anyway yeah and you identify as a more like masculine core masculine man right? um i identify about. as a lot of things but uh <laughs> Michael, when we're talking about feminine and masculine energies. <laughs> yes, masculine. Feminine. Okay, so the feminine energy is more emotional, more patient, more intuitive, and deep. So in terms of communication, if you identify as the more feminine, you want to feel and you want to express and you want to explore the emotions as they arise. And you just want to keep going and going and going. But that's where the problem lies because you may just be expressing like your joy and your glory and your your greatness of your partner and the day and everything that's going on but you're gonna lose him right because he just wants to get to the end as soon as possible i'm pretty sure right? the hockey game on or something yeah. <laughs> yeah so there are there are times and places to do that but we're gonna share how you do that yep um but also what i see a lot of women do and i've done this in my past too is then get on that that rant of all of the things he's doing wrong or that you're angry about or that you're, you know, not just not happy about. And bring up old shit. Exactly. You just started a little ramble there. And so right away, he's going to put up a wall and then he doesn't look like he's listening because he's not. He's totally like got defensive. He's put up his armor. 100%. And now you're like, well, he's a dick. He's not listening to me. He doesn't care. And you do not feel seen, loved or heard. And that just like creates a whole new set of issues. So, and I know you ladies can totally resonate with that. And and can you resonate with that with me coming at you like that? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, and you can resonate with the whole like armor up, checked out, or become a dick because you're like you're blaming. Well, it's just easier that way, right? And mm-hmm. gen like most guys or myself, I would just be a dick to try to make that go away, and then. Yeah, that's like your a form of either fighting Just or really it. shutting yeah. down too, right? Yeah. Like almost stonewalling. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what I have found to work out the best is getting to the point as quickly as possible, 
And then also asking directly for what you want to be because also he can't read your mind. So if you're like slamming doors and insinuating that you want him to do the dishes while you put the kids to bed or help sweep the floor or do something so you can both relax in the evening, um, he's probably not going to get it. <laughs> like he just needs you to be direct and straightforward. And, and like, so if I did all that, you're probably again, like, fucker i'm just gonna sit here and watch the hockey game right well that and be more worried about the door like what quit fucking wrecking doors i'm gonna go fix a door instead of just doing the dishes versus if yeah. i just actually asked you like hey babe can you do the dishes so we can both sit down and relax yeah exactly right and be, most people will say okay and yeah do that right yeah because it's not like you like purposely want to just be a dick and be lazy and no. sit around and make me mad but at the same yeah. token, you have to come at it from a place of partnership and, you know, making that deal or making it obvious that it's going to help out both of you. you. Don't just do it from like a nagging or like a motherly sounding mm -hmm. thing, right? Like, mm -hmm. I don't need, you don't want to be my mom. I don't need you to be my mom. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't need you to tell me what to do. But if you're like, okay, this is going to help both of us, whatever, right? We can yeah. cuddle on the couch or do something, right? And then, mm -hmm. of course, you'll do it. Yeah, which leads me to the point. Okay, so this is what I, I deal with with women because it's like, okay, so how do you get to the point of what you want to say to your partner without being a hurricane of emotions when you don't even really know what you're feeling or what the core issue is, right? Mm -hmm. And so I highly suggest you don't bring that to him because like I said, that's a hurricane of emotions that's going to shut him down or turn sideways on you and all of a sudden start coming out as you're blaming him and he's like, F you. So these are the steps that we're going to talk about. So we'll summarize them because you guys can go to my website and download this and you can have this all right in front of you. You can print it off. Um, but so here's what I recommend to my clients. And so this is for women. Men listen because you can support her in this and you can understand what's going on for her. But also you can take bits and pieces of this and and use it with her as well, right? Like parts of this is very, oh, yeah, it goes you, both ways. And you use it in your everyday life. Right? Yeah. Okay, so when you feel yourself being triggered by something in your relationship, I invite you to take a few breaths and really give yourself some space alone to explore honestly what's coming up for you around these feelings. Because the fact that maybe he walked out of the house and didn't grab the garbage bag um, that was sitting right by the door triggered you and made you mad. It's not actually about the fact that he forgot the garbage bag or that he didn't think about bringing that out with him. And it wasn't that he did it on purpose to give you more work to do. There's something deeper within you that, you know, maybe you feel overworked, you feel unseen, you feel unheard. What you do around the house goes unappreciated. Maybe it's something your dad did to your mom. Like it's triggering something within you for a reason. Right. And that's just a very small example. Mm -hmm. So instead of just blowing up at him or, saying you never take out the garbage, I invite you to just take a few, few deep breaths and, and go into it first. Pull out a journal and just explore it and, and really just like go into like what is actually bothering me right now? Like what is deeper than this? What do I truly want? What am I upset about? Is this incident or experience isolated or has it been going on forever? Because sometimes, you know, if it's something's just the first time, if it's a big thing, yeah, you want to stomp it out and get to the bottom yeah, of it, it right, away. right away. Yeah. But if it's something little and like it's not a big deal, then like is it worth making a big thing about it, right? Mm -hmm. And then go deeper with it. Is this actually about him? What is my part and my responsibility? Because we're really big on personal responsibility here. Um, is this reflecting something within myself that I can shine some love on? What need of mine is not being met? And also just kind of explore, like I said, if there's any other occasions that this is happening on. And so then I do invite you to just kind of sit back and, and explore if you need to talk to him. If right. you've kind of solved it there, then awesome. You're good. You're aware of some things within yourself that you're working on, you're healing, you're moving through. But if you do know, like, no, it's something that I want to share with him. I need to ask him for something. I need to express something to him, like whatever it is. It can just be simply expressing your emotion to your partner. But what you're going to do is actually ask for a time to connect with him. 
Um, this prepares him mentally and prepares yourself mentally as well. And it creates a space for you guys to be able to communicate and talk about something without distraction and noise of, you know, the hockey game on, the kids playing, the phone, scrolling the phone. Like, and it really just goes to show that it's something important that you would like full attention on. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. Well, that will speed up the process for sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And can cause a less a lot less irritation because yeah, you're continually you getting interrupted. But exactly. um also really important for neither of you to be hungry, tired, um, already angry. Right. Um, and so coming at it from there, then also being very respectful. So your body tone, your body language, sorry, your tone of voice and your body language is huge. Mm-hmm. Um, and also being really conscious of the words you use. So not blaming or attacking, like saying you always, or you made me feel it's always I statements and I feel statements. Right. So you, even if you are like needing to bring up something that he did do, that's bothering you. It's I feel blank when you, right. right? You're not making me feel that. That's just how I feel. No, that's huge. Right. And then this is like a really important thing, just only bringing up one discussion or like one topic or one incident at a time. And you can say like, I feel blank when you, which has happened on these occasions, but it's one thing, right? Like maybe something you said to me in front of so-and-so, but this has happened a few times in front of so-and-so, right? right? So like that, having a few incidents is to kind of like prove your point. Um, make it valid but it's not like i feel this when you and then i also feel this when you yeah don't go all over the board right yeah this is the whole point of like being on topic on at the point and and getting it out there as quick as possible so you still (laughs) have him right and men by no means am i saying that like (laughs) you're simple and you have short attention spans because i feel like that may have just sort of come across that way yeah well i mean for the most part we're (laughs) fairly simple you are simple. simple beings yeah yeah that's true but The biggest thing here is just to remember that the masculine is focused and he likes to concentrate on one thing at a time. So don't come at him with a whole hurricane of emotions and he will appreciate you for it. Right. Oh, big time. Absolutely. Because I mean, yeah, you can only handle so much. And then generally you're you're um, you're kind of stressed or overwhelmed or worked or whatever. Right. From from work um, or family or the kids or like both. Everybody is. So the simpler we can make this on both sides, the better. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And so be polite. Treat your partner with more respect than you would your neighbors or your boss. Yeah, that's fucked up. That's in life. (laughs) Right. It really is. Yeah. It's always you treat the people you love or the closest to you the worst kind of thing. Yeah. And we know each other's triggers. Like I could piss you off and whatever. Right. A couple seconds. Yeah. Um, it sucks. Yeah. But anyway, sorry, carry on. But we've talked about that before too, because I mean, yeah, it's so wrong, but at the same time you kind of feel the most comfortable and I guess safe with that person. So you know that they're not going to leave you or yeah, like, it somehow justifies that, but it doesn't. Yeah. It's yeah. still wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you should treat that person with the most respect and love. No, but that's like even teenage years, right? For, I mean, girls too, and guys, like I know my mom, like both my, I know they, like my brother, um, and myself and like my I remember growing up too, like my sister, like I guess all of us, like Bill too, we're just fucking mean to your parents, man. Mm-hmm. And like the shit you say to them and whatever else. But then it's like two minutes later, everything's just <laughs> fine. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Eh? Like, safety and security. It is. In that yeah. Too, like we're but... all like, yeah, it's wild. Yeah. Like we're, we're all like that. Yeah. On that note, Lennox told me today that I'm a boring mom. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> but he said you're boring and nice. So yeah, I don't really know what it, that yeah. means. Yeah, I was like, thanks. So I made a point to be really fun. And then I said, is this boring? And he was like, no, it's Throwing that in his face. (laughs) (laughs) Who's boring now? (laughs) Skydiving with him. You'll be okay. Just turn real extreme now. Anyway, side note. Okay, so then in closing, don't like make him come up with a solution or like make him even speak or have an answer right away like you just created this vessel of this space to be able to express yourself whether you are asking for something you needed from him or just simply expressing your feelings but allow him space to process and then you can ask him for his thoughts and ideas and then the important thing is that you both come to a solution together Mm -hmm. like ask him if he has a solution or if he has any thoughts or ideas 
Um, can you meet halfway? Can you compromise? Right. This is what relationships are about. It's not always, it's not one sided, no, right? Generally it's compromise. Yep. Yeah. And then an important thing is to make a plan moving forward and to set a time to actually come back and discuss this again in the future. So whether it's a week or two down the line, but actually having like going through these same steps again and sitting down and having that distraction free time to actually go over and see if anything has changed and how you're feeling about it now. And then that's how you make change like stick, right? right? Yeah. That's how, how it sticks out for you. So, um, and basically I guess kind of like reassess how it's working out for both of you. So those are the steps. Again, they're all in this booklet, so you can go download it at laurelarock.com. It is called Speak Your Truth, A Woman's Guide to Feeling Seen and Heard in Her Relationship Through Authentic Communication. But yeah, guys, definitely down like if you're listening, download it too, read it over. It's like I say, it's like you're you're basically looking at a cheat book. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it goes both ways. You just gotta spin it a little bit for yourself and then and sit down and have some real conversations and just be open and be mm-hmm be honest and that's the person that you should be the safest with Mm -hmm. so i mean just get it out there but don't yeah just try not to don't turn into a big fight or if you feel like going into a fight just take a break and Mm -hmm. um don't just shut down but just Mm -hmm. both of you agree to take a break and just revisit it again but um there's some real gold there and it does help it really does i know it sounds airy fairy or hokey or whatever but fucking works like it's better than you sitting there ruminating, being mad, having a beer on the couch by yourself, or you could be cuddling each other or whatever, yeah. right? Yeah, if you um, just got over yourself. <laughs> yeah, if you just get the fuck over it and carry on, right? It's not yeah. it's not gonna change. And those are obviously your own your own things. So even if yeah. you if you're dis- or trying to figure out like, well, fuck you, then I'll go find another partner and then you're gonna bring the same thing to that that same relationship. Yeah. So I mean sucks, your patterns and your habits follow you no matter where you go. Yeah, it's this crazy <laughs> shadow thing that just won't leave. <laughs> But, but it's true, right? Like you, you have to be open. You got to let your guard down with that person. That's your partner. That's your fucking, Mm -hmm. that's who you're doing this life with. You have to be open with each other. Yeah. It'll just make it so much fun and you'll make it so much easier. And it won't make, like, I mean, it won't make any more problems disappear, but I mean, it makes them, you can work on them together and it makes it so much easier. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And I think what's cool about all of this too is that like the first step of it is actually tuning inwards and needing to get in touch with what you're even feeling or your own triggers, your own beliefs, right? And you dealing with that first. So that personal responsibility step is so huge because you're not just like throwing more shit into the fire of your relationship. Like you're owning it first and then coming to your partner. Yeah. But then on the same note, so like those last few points are like super applicable to both both sexes in the partner, both in the partnership, <laughs> both sexes in the partnership. Um, but also keep in mind your listening skills, right? Like not taking it personal. This is where personal responsibility still is in play. So when your partner's coming to you to express something that's going on for them or something they need from you, being aware of this isn't about me. Yes. Right? Yeah. And then not turning it on them. And I think once you have that level of respect, that changes a lot too. It does. And that's, again, I keep referring back to like, those are life skills though too. Like when people come at you, especially like right now in these times and um, people just seem to want to argue with everybody. But I mean, it's not, don't just turn that into like a physical fight or like a verbal fight. Just know that generally it's their own shit that's just coming at like well, just coming out right and there's a lot of fear involved right a lot there of is 100 and a lot of fear and, and we do bring that into our relationship oh yeah as well, fear right? like fear like fear you leaving or fear of anything yeah right? exactly so. like i said before that if we're not living in this fantasy relationship then that means we're living in a chaos relationship and that means that we're going to get a divorce or yeah. we're not meant for each other or something right but that's not true no, no not <laughs> you at all. can build these skills and then i i will end on saying that what is really annoying about this though this is real life is that once you know this stuff and you practice it and you implement it to this day, like literally I think it was today or it was yesterday, there was something that pissed me off and I wanted to just like be a bitch about it and just like ignore you and like be passive aggressive. Right. But I can't, I want to, 
because there's that part in me that's just like a little kid throwing a tantrum inside of me. Right? Yeah, 100 percent. Yeah. But because like my mind is conscious of it and aware that I'm like, fuck, I have to be the grown up and I have to go apologize or yeah, I have talk to talk like, this through. Yeah. I have to go explore my feelings and see why this is triggering me and then bring it to you and have a communi- yeah. like, communicate about it. Right. Yeah, so no, that's fair. But I mean, obviously I'm being sarcastic and that's a huge blessing because then again, we're not going to bed angry and we're actually able to spend more meaningful time together. But just in the moment, it doesn't necessarily get easier. I've been practicing this for years now with you and I'm still a little kid inside. Oh yeah, no, it's, it is. It's it's just easier to, it's easy to get mad or go mm-hmm. have a drink or just shut down or mm-hmm. whatever. I mean, there's obviously some anger and resentment and all that other feelings there, but it's easy. It's comfortable. Yeah. So you're in your comfort zone, right? But when you're sitting there talking face to face and getting through issues, I mean, it's hard. It, it is. Like, I mean, you got to dig deep and you got to really face some fears and face some face some issues that, you know, you just either bury deep down or you didn't even know were there. But exactly. you, you really have to face them. And yeah. it's uh, it's tough sometimes, but fuck the outcome or the, the other side of it is so much better than... Mm-hmm than being stuck in just Groundhog Day, basically, right? Just being mad and just stuck in a cycle. And yeah, it's tough. It really is. Well, and that's the thing. Like our partners are mirrors in our relationships, right? And if we actually want to grow and evolve, all we have to do is look at the the reasons that they trigger us and go inwards, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm actually, even though I'm like annoyed in those moments and I just want to be a a tantrum-throwing toddler um, or a a non-compliant teenager, (laughs) I can look at that and be like, no, this is my opportunity to heal on a yeah. deeper level and to grow on a deeper level. And then I can change my perspective to that. Right. And then own it, come to you and, and grow with you. So yeah, no, that's good. Just some real life there because things aren't always roses and butterflies over here in the little rock house. No, <laughs> the rocks, yeah. the rocks are throwing stones. <laughs> okay. Well, no, that's awesome. So people can find this where? lauralarock.com so if you go to my website you'll be able to download it there um or go to my social media as well Laura Larock, that's instagram facebook find me there and there'll be links to it and okay. we can we'll put the link in the show notes too so wherever you're watching this from just check the show notes and there'll be a direct link to download it as well okay perfect but there's one stipulation when you download it you have to read it implement it but then like in the next week or so i'm totally expecting inboxes because I want to hear your stories. I want to hear how it's worked out for you, what's resonated with you, what's worked, what didn't work, yeah, how your partner received it, anything that shifted in your relationship. Like that's all I ask. I created this for free. Like I put my heart and soul into this from my own personal experience and from my research over the last few years. And like it's all I ask in return is just share with me, please. It's great. Awesome. Well, let's leave it at that. Okay. Okay. Well, great work. It's awesome. I love you. I love you too. I'm proud of you. Oh, thank you. Okay. Love you guys. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Thanks guys. Have a good day.